Hey everyone, welcome to another Top 10 list. This week's Top 10 list is the Top 10 Legal Tenders. Now, Legal Tenders have all kinds of names, actually. Um, the Legal Tender Note, of course, is what I'm calling it. But they're also known as United States Notes. And more generically, they're also called Red Seals. So when you see Red Seals, when you see United States Notes, uh, those are all Legal Tenders. Uh, legal Tender, the term comes from the fact that the notes aren't backed by gold. They aren't backed by silver. Um, the way the notes came about is that Congress passed a law allowing the Treasury to print so much money. They can print X amount of dollars. So uh, by law, X amount of dollars can be used as tender, as, as currency. So that is the legal tender portion of it. Now, People will argue and debate this all the time with me, and it drives me insane. If you go to the website, the website says that any money printed by the U.S. government is still good. Uh, I beg to differ. I don't care what the website says. Um, first and foremost, these notes that I'm about to show, being legal tenders, were made legal... <laughs> Because of a law. That is the law. That is the legal portion of legal tender. Now, the law gives those notes value. That law was repealed in 1998. <laughs> so, that law does not exist anymore. So, the law that gave these notes value, with that note not existing then these notes don't have value as far as spending goes. That's not going to stop people from spending them, which is insane because if you have red seals that you want to sell for face value, I will take them for face value. Um, but yeah, you will still encounter red seals, especially the $2 bills. Occasionally a $5 bill you'll see uh, from banks. But uh, $2 bills are actually still quite frequently found in circulation. Like I said... Legally, they are not spendable. <laughs> they are obsolete. They are done. The law saying that they are legal tender is gone. Um, and because of that, it isn't uh, technically legal to spend them. And anybody who wants to debate me on that, well, let me add my proof. The website says that anything printed by the U.S. is still valid currency. That's what the website says. Um... I'll take ten thousand dollars, please. Okay, I guess uh, I guess I win that argument because no one's gonna give me ten thousand dollars for this. <laughs> so yeah, don't tell me that the website says anything that was printed is still worth its face value because, like I said, that was printed. That says ten thousand dollars. That is not worth its face value. So I win the argument. <laughs> so anyway, top ten legal tenders. Number 10 on my list. This is from 1923. 1923 $1 legal tender looks a lot like the silver certificate from 1923. Uh, the only difference is it says United States note here instead of silver certificate. It has a red seal. Uh, it's red. Red serial number here. From the back, you couldn't tell them apart. They are the same on the back. The only difference, like I said... The red seal. This one says United States note, so it is a legal tender. Uh, the silver certificate actually had silver to back it. This had a law to back it. So that's number 10 on my list, just because it looks so familiar to everybody, yet so different by being as big as it is and having the giant red seal on there. That's number 10. Number 9, going back just a couple years, this is a 1917 $2 bill. 1917 $2 legal tender, you see right on the top, this note is legal tender for $2. And on the bottom, there it is once again saying United States note. Now I know it's a legal tender at a glance because I can see the red seal and I can see the red numbers for the serial number. Now being a 1917, there's the 1917 series right there, engraved and printed at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Uh, also known as the Office of the Re Office of Redundancy Office. Now, the two dollar bill, as you can, as most two dollar bills of the time, has a torn corner right here, and the torn corner was to break bad luck. When you got a two dollar bill, you were supposed to tear a corner, then spend it, and hopefully the next person would tear the corner. And after four people had gotten the note and tore the corners, that would end the curse of bad luck. 
You couldn't do it yourself. You had to hope that somebody else did it, so you were putting your luck in someone else's hands. Anyway, that's the curse of the $2 bill, but this is the $2.1917 legal tender. A uh, cool scalloping design there on the back. That I just wish mine was in a little bit better condition. Uh, I'm sure I'll upgrade it someday, but right now I'm more focused on filling holes rather than upgrading notes. Anyway, that's number nine on my list. Number eight, going way back. This is from the first series of legal tenders ever produced. In fact, this is one of the first notes ever produced. It is a $5 legal tender from 1862. 1862 $5 legal tender. You can kind of read it right there. March 10th, 1862. It's got the red seal on there. Uh, it's got the red numbers, just like we're used to. Not in the greatest of shape. Uh, you can see here, Act of February 23rd, is it? 25th, 23rd, 1862. That's when the legal act, the part that made this legal, the law, was enacted. Um, now, this is from the very first series. Not only is it from the very first series, but the first note produced was a $5 bill because we already had a bunch of silver dollars in circulation. So having a $5 note was the first one that would be needed. You can see on the back there, United States of America, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private, except duties and... can't read the rest of it. Uh, except, except for duties on imports. Uh, and that goes on to say the rest of it there. This particular note, like I said, from 1862, this one has seen a lot. These go for a lot, and this one isn't in the greatest shape. Uh, I didn't really want to have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on this note, so when I found one that was in, well, this shape, obviously, uh, I decided to pick it up, because that way I can check it off the list and not have to worry too much about it. Uh, until much further down the line when I'd be interested in upgrading some of my notes. Um, by getting a note like this in lesser condition allows me to have the pride of ownership and move on to the next one rather than just be hung up on trying to find the most expensive perfect note there was. I just wanted to have one. <laughs> 1862 $5 legal tender, number eight on my list. Number seven, I actually have a pair of notes. Uh, these are the 1907 $5 legal tenders. You can see they both say United States note on the top. They both say legal tender for $5 on the bottom. And they both have red seals, red serial numbers, and the red Roman numeral V. Now the legal tender, the $5 note here, this is known as the wood chopper. Uh, features Andrew Jackson there, and you've got the wood chopper with his axe, thus chopping wood. You can see the chopped wood on the side. His dog is standing on it. He's got his rifle, his wife, his baby, his home in the background. The wood chopper from 1907, really cool note, but why do I have two of them? I have two of them because of the saying on the back. This is a legal tender at its face value for all debts, public and private. Okay, you can see that. For all that's public and private, that's what it says. However, on this one, this note is a legal tender at, at its face value for all debts. PC, right here, PCBLIC. So they, the public looks like PCB instead of PUB. There was a sl there was a small break in the plate, and this one is known as the public error. Once again, on the top is what it's supposed to look like, and on the bottom, I think I got them both in there. Public on the bottom with a broken U, public on top with a full U. So I've got the public error and the regular version of the note. Um, I was really excited to get the public error version. Um, you hear about it, you just don't see it too often, so now I've got that one there. That is the 1907 wood chopper. Once again, that's it's not a spiral on the back, but at a glance it does look like a spiral, kind of a tunneling effect there, on the, and uh, just a really cool note overall. So that is number seven, 10, nine, eight, seven. Number six. Number six, I'm going with the 1928 $1 legal tender. Now, you can see on the top, it does say United States note. Um, and over here, the seal does say United States. This note is a legal tender at its face value for all debts, public and private, except duties on imports and interest on the public debt. 
I uh, recently got this note. This one is an upgrade for me. Um, take a peek at the back. It does have the funny back on the backside. And you'll notice the price on this one is up there. <laughs> Much higher than the silver certificates because the only time there was ever a $1 Red Seal legal tender in the small size was this note here in 1928. Now, if I recall, they only printed about a million of these notes. and They were all printed in... Were they printed in one day? <laughs> and these note were these notes were used uh, in Puerto Rico. So many of you are going to say, "Why is it a United States note if it was used in Puerto Rico?" Um, because Puerto Rico, especially in 1928, was essentially no different than Hawaii. It's a U.S. Uh, property. It's 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 a U.S. island, just like Hawaii was at that time. Um, so anyone who thinks that Puerto Rico isn't part of the United States, um, <laughs> no, you're just, you're just wrong. You're just out there. Uh, I, I always get a kick out of people saying, go back to your own country because they live in Puerto Rico and <laughs> not people don't realize that that's America. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, United States note that was specifically designed for circulation in Puerto Rico. Um, makes me laugh all the time just because I really enjoy hypocrisy. Um, <laughs> this one is definitely in my top 10. Uh, what do we got? Number 5, 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh, number 6. 10, 9, 8, 7. Yep, number 6. The $1 legal tender. The Puerto Rican note. Number 5. Back to the beginning, from 1862, this is a $1 legal tender. If you collect singles like I do, this is the first single. <laughs> this was the first time that the federal government ever made a $1 bill. Now, there were there were $1 uh, notes made by, uh, by the colonies. There were $1 notes made by the Const uh, Constitutional Congress. Uh, yeah, Constitutionals. Yeah, that would be the Continental Congress. Uh, Continentals, not Constitutionals, sorry. Uh, anyway, the first time that the U.S. government printed money, it was done like this. This is from the 1862 series. You can see this one is a 35 EPQ choice. Very fine. I was really proud to get a hold of this note. Uh, that's uh, 7P Chase on the front there. And uh, he's got some incredible history behind him. If you ever get bored, look up who he was specifically, and you'll be floored that you didn't know him. Um, anyway, uh, you know it's a legal tender. It's got the red seal, red serial numbers. Um, act of July 11th, 1862. That was when the law was made to give this value. And let me just take a peek on the back here. Uh, National Banknote Company. National Banknote Company is what it says on the bottom. Washington, D.C. Taking a look at the back. Really nice shape on this particular note. Exceptional paper quality, of course, is what this one was given. Um, so, yeah, I was really proud to get this. If you're going to collect $1 bills, obviously having the first issue of the first $1 bill ever produced has to be on your list. That's why this is on mine. It is number 5. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, number 5. Number 4. Another legal tender note, obviously, <laughs> with this being top 10 legal tenders. Uh, this one is interesting because it says this note is a legal tender for $10. It has a red seal, but the numbers are blue. As long as one of these was red, that was all that mattered. This particular one is the 1880 $10 legal tender. And this one uses that awesome picture of an eagle on it. Why is that such a cool picture? Well, that eagle that's standing on a branch that's about to take flight... <laughs> If you take this and rotate this, just like so, you now get an eyeball and an ear and a white muzzle. This becomes a donkey. This is the jackass note. The jackass note from 1880, the $10 legal tender. I still don't know if that was done on purpose or not. I uh, guess it doesn't matter because there it is. It's definitely a donkey. Or is it definitely an eagle? Either way, it's a cool picture of an eagle, cool picture of a donkey. Uh, one of the coolest notes out there because of that little thing on there. The uh, $10 legal tender. Take a look at the back. You can see how colorful it is. They still left a little bit of space so you'd be able to see the red and blue fibers there. Um, yeah, really sweet note. The 1880 $10 jackass note. Number th four on my list. Number three. 
The 1901 $10 Bison. Uh, bison note, this is one of the coolest notes you'll find. It's got a North American Bison. That is not a Buffalo. There are no Buffalo in the U.S. Uh, they are North American Bison. Uh, buffalo are native to Africa. We call them Water Buffalo. <laughs> but this is a North American Bison. Uh, the two gentlemen pictured on here are Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark... And with the buffalo, because nobody saw more buffalo than they did when they first crossed the Great Plains to go exploring to see what we actually uh, purchased with the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, you can see the back of this note, once again, has the huge areas of white on it to make it tough on counterfeiters. This is just a sticker. I should put this in a different case. Uh, the $10 legal tender, the bison note. This is definitely one of the coolest legal tenders out there. One of the more expensive ones as well. That is number three. Number two, check this out. 1869 $1 legal tender. This is a rainbow. I got a rainbow. $1 rainbow note. Now, you may see that this design looks quite familiar. They used this design from 1869 all the way to 1917. The only thing that changed was the color. You can see the bluish to the greenish and the way that it fades across like that. Add on the gigantic red seal. And you can see why this was called a rainbow note. You've got all these different colors on there. Another cool thing about the rainbow, this one's graded at 25, is all the serial numbers ended with a star. Now, this is not a replacement note. <laughs> Imagine having a star note from 1869, what that would be worth. Um, but no, they all, all the notes had stars. That was just part of the serial number at that particular time. Uh, now, this 1869 rainbow note, take a peek at the back. You can see it does have couple folds in it like that. It does have a little bit of a stain over here as well. Still, it was good enough to get a 25. The note's graded. I like that. Uh, I don't have to debate anybody on it. It's encapsulated, so I know it's safe. So yeah, that is number two on my list, the 1869 Rainbow $1 bill. And finally, number one, any guesses? This is 1923 $10 legal tender. Uh, features Andrew Jackson on it, which is kind of odd. Now, this note is known as the poker chip. And the first time I ever saw one of these, the guy said, oh, yeah, that's my poker chip. And he kept going, that's my poker chip. And I thought he was referring to this as a poker chip, and I didn't quite understand. Being a poker dealer, being a poker player, poker chip meant a lot to me. And since this note wasn't very fascinating, I kind of just ignored it. Until I found out why it was called the poker chip. <laughs> It's called a poker chip because of the back. Check out the two giant poker chips on the back of this one. Uh, $10 legal tender known as the poker chip, and you've got the rays coming out of the center like that. The back of this note is exceptionally cool. Front, not quite as neat, but the back is definitely what makes this particular note as cool as it is. Uh, these notes sell for roughly, they'll start off at about two grand and go up from there. So they are a huge investment to get, and being called a poker chip have a whole lot of demand from collectors and, oh, I don't know, poker players <laughs> who tend to be throwing around all kinds of money whenever they get a chance to. So that makes these notes extremely tough to get. High demand notes. Uh, that is number one on my list. All right, so that was my top 10 legal tenders. Uh, if you agree with my list, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, if you have an idea for a top 10 list, leave that down in the comments. I always do my best to answer all my comments. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you again next week.